open new page. We are living in, we are living in the last harvest period. Almost every Christians believe that this era is the near the end time of human history and also Christians believe the second coming of Jesus will be very soon. We do not know when this would happen, but as we go through all the biblical teachings on the signs of the second coming of Jesus, we cannot deny his imminent coming. As we studied the first sign of the second coming of Jesus was the religious pluralism. There are three biblical references here, biblical background. One in Matthew 24, 4, 5. Second, Matthew 24, 23 to 28. And third, Revelation <coughs> chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. The man on the white horse. Do you remember all this? Yes, Good. Now change your paragraph. This prophetic references here what we call the religious pluralism. This doctrine has historical root and background. We will go over how the religious pluralism had developed. In order to fulfill the prophecies of Jesus Christ, who is the Alpha and Omega, controller of all human history, had allowed He's allowed some scientists and philosophers to develop the religious pluralism. It was not happened by chance. It was not happened by chance, but it's been well planned by God to fulfill his prophecy. Why did Jesus prophesy this? It is because Satan will attack main value of the gospel, main value of the gospel, which is main and core value, I would say core of the gospel, which is is the doctrine of Trinity and doctrine of salvation and Christology. Satan will attack their core Christian doctrine, denying Christology and attacking the biblical Christology and even diluting. Diluting means what? Delusion. Delusion means, you know, that this is a sugar water, say, 
Okay? Sweet or coffee, I would say. Coffee. Okay? Now you put additional water inside and make the coffee thin, thinning the true coffee. So now you don't you lose you, you have lost to what? Taste of coffee. Okay? That's a dilution. You're adding adding water. Okay, and for losing the true taste, true value. Subduing taste. Hmm? Subduing taste. Yes, yeah. Okay, same here. You are adding some doctrine inside of the true Christian doctrine and diluting the value of Jesus. You are diluting the power of the blood of Jesus. Okay? So it looks like the blood, but no more the blood of Jesus. So it's confusing. And Matthew 24, 4, 5 said, you're cheating and misleading. So many people will be, many, even the elect, remember 24, verse 24, 24, Matthew 24, 24 says, even the elect will be cheated. Even those Christians will be cheated. Many will spiritually die. In verse Matthew 24, 28 said, call, you know, call, dead body. Okay? They will be a dead body, and vultures will gather to eat the meat. The vultures will eat the Satan. Vultures. Satan will gather, and devils will gather, eat the dead body. That was Jesus' prophecy, which will be the first sign of the second coming of Jesus. And now, change the paragraph. These people already were prepared 500 years ago during the 16th century. At that time, of course, Reformation was there, 1517. There's a Reformation time. Now, there are two distinctive reformers that reformation was a religious reformation, but over here, social and science and philosophical reformers during those days. There is a father of modern science was born here, Francis Bacon. Francis Bacon is a British man. AD 1561 to 1626. He is the man who, who, who started modern science, Francis Bacon. Out of his, his idea, many scientists came to birth. They appeared. Okay? There's one famous man, Galileo. That's Italian man, right? Hmm? 1564 to 1642. What he believed? He believed this planet Earth is it's not round, but it's, it's, it's moving, circling. Okay, write that down. This man came out to idea that this planet Earth is revolving. That teaching was against the Vatican teaching, Roman Catholic teaching. This man was a Roman Catholic, Italian man. But Vatican was very upset about his new discovery. And Paul killed him. And then there is another British man, Isaac Newton. Isaac Newton here, 
1642 to 1727. Isaac Newton was man, you know, theory of gravity, you know, gravity. All these new scientific discoveries came out during those days. And also, these people developed navigation technology. Navigation technology brought them to travel, not from Europe, because they built ocean liner, okay, and sailed to other continents. So they discovered new continents. First of all, they discovered African continents. So they sailed to Africa. That was the beginning of the colonization of Africa. And they, they took natural resources from the continent, including human power. And also they traveled to su southern, central, and northern America, especially the countries like Spain and Portugal, they started in navigation technology. So they traveled South America, Central America, colonized all South and Central America under their control. So today, from Mexico all the way down to Argentine, they speak Spanish. And Brazil is only Portuguese colony, speaking Portuguese language. Okay. Later, British people went down to Africa colonize African countries and French people also went to Africa. So Africa is mainly colonized by these two countries. Most of Africans colonized by British but some of them colonized by French. So those are French Africans are, what is it? Cote d'Ivoire and Cameroon, Cameroon and what else? And Sierra Leone too? Liberia? Liberia is not. And uh, how about uh, Cameroon, uh, how about uh, Jairo? No? Chair. Is no? Has Angola. Angola. Yeah, Angola is a French. Algeria. 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 Yeah, Algeria. Uh, Algeria. And then remaining of them, most of them British. Okay? Okay, now this science had developed by this Francis Bacon had got spread it all over like this, okay? At the same time, in the ideology part, ideology, right here, philosophers, the father of the modern philosophy is René, not René, René, it's a French word, okay? René, Descartes, okay, René Descartes. About the same time, it's a Frenchman, 1596 to 1650. This man is the father of modern philosophy. They were all Roman Catholics, Christians. 
same age over Francis Bacon, all those guys. And his, his philosophical approach was learned by John Locke. He's a very famous, all these guys, Locke is a, is a British man, 1632 to 1704. Now, John Locke, who learned this uh, modern philosophy from uh, Rene Descartes, he became the father of modern age of reason. You know reasoning? Reasoning. Okay. A reasoning, I put down here, later reasoning means it's a rationing. It's a ration. You know what I meaning ration? Because you are not an English speaking people. It's a rationing. Your brain, I would say, okay? It's a reasoning brain, okay? Yeah, yeah. Your reasoning brain, it's a reason. Can you come up with better expression here? Uh, reason, because though most of us are not English speaking, reasoning, it's uh, reasoning. Eh? Thinking capacity, I would say. That's the uh, reasoning, not emotional. It's a brain, it's thinking. So knowledge, knowledge and understanding, that part, it's a reasoning. So now John Locke was the modern father of age of reasoning. Because of this, see here, this is 1704 means beginning of 18th century. 1700 means this, 1700 to 1800, this is called 18th century. Got it? Now here, 19th century means what? 18 to 1900. 1900. This is the 19th century. So in 19th century, right after this, uh, John Locke and philosophers' main theme was skepticism. Skepticism. Skepticism means what? Skepticism. Skepticism means you are suspicious okay when you look at a matter okay you will look at something and matter you say you don't take it as it is always suspicious why like that okay why yeah? I don't believe it why this is skepticism you know suspicious yeah questioning it's a questioning. I don't believe it. Why? You know? And suspicious. This kind of idea was the philosophy. They said, this idea entered in philosophy in the beginning, but this idea had entered Every disciplines. Disciplines means, you know, when you are in university, you have a philosophy, literature department, literary department, and engineering department, and business department, all each department, see? All these subjects called disciplines. This subject, academic subject, called disciplines. So this skepticism, skepticism, okay, skepticism. This skepticism entered in physics, in geology, even biology, even business, every subject. Once you have this kind of, kind of a stimulus, why, why? Then you, you would look for more and more. So that science got developed because of this skepticism. Because of this, 
we call that the enlightenment here. Enlightenment. Even scientific methods develop that produces enlightenment. The enlightenment. You are lightened. Okay? In opposition term, you, you have been in darkness. But now you are now enlightened. Okay? So this science helped the society more brighter. So they call this 16th century, 17th century, 18th century, 200 years time, we call it the Enlightenment period. Okay? And through this Enlightenment period, more this Enlightenment contributed in science and philosophy part. So these philosophers, out of the enlightenment, it went further forward called period of skepticism. Enlightenment, and then it went further to skepticism. After you got enlightened, that was not it. Enlightenment and skepticism. Now, I don't believe. Okay? We have to search whether whether that is true or not. That's a skepticism. Got it? These major skeptic philosophers here in 19th century, this idea came out of British here from John Locke. But John Locke's idea okay, went to German starting 19th century. The German people got enlightened. There are three Germans. They are philosophers and theologians. So theology, theology got contacted by this enlightenment and skepticism. So this philosophical idea went to theology. Okay? And these theologians started with the Immanuel Kant here in 1772 to 1804. Immanuel Kant, he said, I am a Christian. I believe God. I believe God's existence. But how can understand God through our reasonings? Since we cannot touch God, we cannot see God, we cannot believe what the Bible said, especially those miracles. Skepticism is raising questions, questions about the Bible. Okay? His disciple is not George, Georg. Georg Hegel. Hegel. The German, German word is Hegel. AD 1770 to 1831. And Hegel's disciple is Frederick Schreier Macher. It's, it's, it's a German, German word. Okay, E I is I E. So, okay. Schreier, Schreier Macher. Macher, Macher. In English it's Kur, but uh, Macher. Macher. Schreier Macher. Frederick Schreier Macher. Immanuel Kant's philosophical grandchild. grandchild. Now, the Schreiermacher, all these three guys, especially the F. Schreiermacher, his idea for 200 years from him, his idea was the founding philosophy and theology for today's liberal theologians. He is a kind of a father of today's liberal theology. One of his right markers 
very famous theologian, it's all Germans, Albert Ritchel. Albert Ritchel, very famous man, 1822 to 1889. Now, it's about 100 years ago, man, from now. 100 years, about a little over 120. This man really, really developed today's liberal theology. He was a foundational man. So those liberal theologians who, who learned theology from him called Richlians, the Richlians. So even today, they, are you Richlians? Then, yes, I am, and I am not. Of course, I am not the Richlians. Now, today, all liberal theologians got one way or another infected by the, his teachings and, and, and his father's teachings right here. Now, it comes to the 20th century. These Albert Ritchel, Richelians, there are three well-known, his disciples, Richelians, all Germans. The first is Adolf Harunak, Harunak. Say after me, Harunak. Harunak. This man, they don't even believe Jesus is right here. They don't believe the virgin birth of Jesus. They don't believe the deity of Jesus. They don't believe full humanity of Jesus. They don't believe atonement of Jesus. All these, you know, I put it down all this. They don't believe physical resurrection, even physical ascension of Jesus. They said all symbolic or, you know, it's a, a Bible made a story because with our reason, with our human reason, it is impossible. Now, Walter Rauschenbusch is a very famous man too. Walter Rauschenbusch. This man is today is the father of social gospel. So, you know, social gospel? We Christian Christianity actually is not for the, you know, remember the postmodernism? We have to make this society a uh, paradise. So now the rich people you have to give up your rich and, and help those poor people. You know, helping the poor, helping those isolated, those in the prison, those in, in hungry, okay, those in injustice, okay, all these, we have to help them. That's the building of the kingdom of God. That's what we call that social gospel. It's Walter Rauschenbusch is kind of founder of the today's social gospel. Then out of these two, now new man came, Paul Tillich. Tillich. Okay, Paul Tillich. He developed new called neo means new. Neo new liberalism. Actually, these people, especially till, okay, believed in religious pluralism. All religions are the same. Christian God is love. Therefore, he will save all People, all these people believe this. We human was created in the image of God. Genesis 1:27, in the image of God. Therefore, we have ability. Human has 
ability of thinking and reasoning as much as God. Our thinking, our reasoning, okay, our wisdom is the same as God's wisdom because we are the image of God. Whatever we cannot understand in our wisdom and in our reasoning, that is not true. So they put top priority, they put the reasons, the top priority above everything. So we have to develop our reasoning, which is the will of God. And these people believe our God is a real God, and he gave us reasoning and his wisdom. Therefore, our God does not need to stay in this world with us. God does not need to stay with us in this world. Because his power and his wisdoms are in us. No need him, no need our God be with us here on a daily basis. So they call this Christian God is absentee God. You know, absent? Absent means what? Not present. Okay. So the Christian God is absentee God, he said. You use that term, okay? Absentee God. That's their philosophical terminology. We Christians, human being, has all attribute of God. Attribute means what? Attribute. His character, including power and wisdom. So it is a human responsibility to develop human wisdom. So God above in heaven will not interfere us. He loves us, but he will not interfere our daily activities. So the human is the primary task performer. Human well-being depends on human himself, not by God. So human is responsible for human well-being. This is what we call humanism, humanism. humanism. Prior to their theology, we had been totally dependent on God. 
believing that God is in the midst of us. And God is in control of all human life. This is called deitism. Deitism, D E I T. Deitism. It's God centered ism. Deitism. Okay? Now, because of these guys here, these liberals, deitism. Now was slowly moving to what ism? Humanism. Okay? Yeah. Now here I'm not talking about those non Christians, okay? I'm talking about Christians here. Christian theology got changed from Deism to deistic humanism, not denying God. Deistic means allowing God but human centered. That's a deistic humanism. It's God centered deism here, but a human centered kind of deism. Deism is a God centered to human centered. Now, the Descartes here, this man, this man Descartes, he has a very famous statement. Descartes' statement is this. I think, write that down, therefore I am. That's what he said. I think, therefore I am. In Latin, it says, cogito. Ergo sum. This means I think, therefore I am. See, it, it, now he emphasizes on reasoning, thinking. The man has a thinking capacity. Okay. Therefore, out of his teachings, Modern science, mathematics got developed. Now change the paragraph. All these people's idea was historically contributing factors to fulfill the prophecy of Jesus Christ. As 19th century enters, slowly these Christian philosophers began to criticize the Bible according to their thinking, reasoning, and rationing by raising questions and doubt, questions and doubts. Even today, the liberal theologians are practicing this. So those 19th century to even 20th century, the Bible criticizing approaches called, this is what they call, <clears throat> the biblical High criticism. 
तो बिब्रिकल हाई क्रिटिसिज्म यू डोंट फॉरगेट दिस बिब्रिकल हाई क्रिटिसिज्म क्रिटिसाइजिंग द बाइबल बेस्ड ऑन देयर ओन रीजनिंग्स इन देयर क्रिटिसिज्म दे डिनाइड all the supernatural evidences and events and stories in the bible i wrote it down here such as virgin birth of jesus even crossing red sea and physical resurrection and physical ascension and five robes and two fishes walking on the water and raising the dead and so on all these bible supernatural events were denied by them they said bible expressed this to demonstrate the greatness of god in those days it was a cultural expression of those days and in those countries culturally they expressed the power of god in that way that those all these are supernatural events stories are not true just the expressing the great power of god in that way Okay so these people believe this 